old question that man has always asked, that everyone wonders, everyone ponders also to think and question, and that is, what if? What if has been a question to many people, like what if things in history were different? Like, what if Hitler died immediately and the, and all the people who were Jews weren't killed horribly in the Holocaust? What would be different? What if Martin Luther King Jr. didn't got shot dead at his own home? Questions people as asked said, actually said that in real life history. But mainly people have asked this question, what if, with movies, comics, video games... Uh, all sorts of pop culture media and it's been always asked and made videos upon in like YouTube for many years. I remember watching videos in a Star Wars like YouTube channel that talked about the what if questions like what if Anakin never turned to the dark side? What if Anakin won the fight and killed Obi-Wan? What if he destroyed killed the Emperor as well and then raised his children to be uh, children of the dark side as well, just like him. It's age-old questions that have said that, and I've seen videos on it with like what ifs of Star Wars that were pretty interesting to me. Even what ifs that people have always that were made official kind of from their own like. Uh, from the own creators of TV shows or movies. Ben 10 did like two what if episodes actually, where Ben and wakes up one day with the knowledge of what he had for two or three seasons of the series and wakes up to find out he doesn't have the Omnitrix and he's sent back in time where he never had the Omnitrix. But also in a twist of fate, he doesn't get it his cousin Gwen gets it, and then she becomes the superhero that Ben was supposed to be. Which was interesting what if questions about what the heck happened and how things would have changed differently, like drastically, in the Ben 10 universe if Ben was someone that had the knowledge of the future of a different timeline, and he applies it to the... Uh, it to what he does now in the past and it is very interesting especially the final episode of Ben 10 was a what if episode like what if his secret was out Vilgax attacked his hometown and then he becomes a hero to all like it is interesting pondering questions and then alien force says that never happened <laughs> and very interesting what if has been very very good questions about what if something changed di differently especially with DC like what if Bat what if Bruce Wayne's parents weren't killed but Bruce Wayne himself was killed in that mugging and then Thomas Wayne becomes Batman and then Martha Wayne becomes the Joker it's insane Yet it's such an interesting concept of what if, if it wasn't Bruce Wayne? What if it wasn't him that becomes Batman, but his father? Yeah. And I do love that in, in like media of wondering what happens if one small minute detail could change everything. And it's usually like that. Sometimes it's like you think, oh, this needs to happen. Or, oh, like, if this one thing happened and it changed everything for the good of mankind in the universe, there could be a different uh, problem arising also that could uh, screw up everything that that one detail was meant to happen to stop a more horrific fate from happening. And I do like that concept. I do like that interesting thing of how things would have changed if one thing wasn't the same. And that ha and this show does a phenomenal job doing that. 
asking the age-old question of what if. Only it's not just from pages of comics. It's not just uh, stuff you see in YouTube videos where they show a bunch of like art and images and a narrator tells you, well, this would have happened if this one thing, small thing changed. And just tell you that this is a fully animated and show, official show made by Disney, made by Marvel to actually give fans those what if questions an actual like story, like an actual like animated story and actually put the actors who were in those movies, well, not all of them, but some of those actors in those movies reprise their roles but find out they're different but they have a different role in this alternate universe where things went different and i was on board for a bit with the first episode i was like that was pretty good but the second episode oh my god that was beautiful that was amazing i i was fully on board after that point because you know I had shows that kind of disappoint me. WandaVision had me on the ball for a lot of episodes until its final episode came along and it kind of like ruined everything. It became meh in a way. Falcon and the Winter Soldier had the same thing. It started off well, was good, but then, you know, ended really terribly by being really, really political and trying to hop on their soapbox and try to say, hey, this is what the government should change. And it kind of drags on too long and you get bored and uninterested about it. And then Loki, which I love, I think Loki is the best out of the live action Marvel shows, but sometimes it gets lost in a few places where it gets meh. And sometimes it gets good again, but sometimes you're like wondering, what the heck? Heck, I didn't hate it, the climax. The climax was better than the climaxes from the last two shows, but, you know, maybe it's because Loki's trying to expand more with other seasons while WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier try to, like, you know cram as many stuff as possible in a short amount of episodes just to like do just to like get things over with not knowing if they're gonna do more in the future these actors but the Loki series is very confident in itself thinking like we can totally expand this to more than one season which I'm okay with they want to leave things open and leave things more uh, to be uh, explored in the whole uh, TVA kind of thing with the timeline, which I'm liking. But what if? I think what if might be the best because it really is something to behold, something to love, because it actually is something interesting that shows all these characters in like different universes that uh that are experiencing different things and i love that i do enjoy that in this show it really is great at expanding like a knowledge of saying like oh my god what if this happened and it's just beautiful because it's something you want it's fan service but it's a fan service thing that makes sense Because it's like, oh, of course that would totally happen. Oh, of course that would totally happen. I mean, there's one thing I kind of was like rolling my eyes thinking, no, that was fan service, (laughs) what they were doing there. And I will get to it later. Yes, I will be talking about spoilers in this show. But before I do, let's talk about a few things I love from the first two episodes before I get into spoilers. Episode one, which is Peggy Carter as Captain America, well, more like Captain Carter because she's not from America and she's British. And of course her suit would be a British flag and the shield also have the British British flag as well. So of course it's 
not gonna be America because that's not her country. And it makes sense. She'd be more of a British superhero than a American super soldier. And it was pretty cool. I thought Steve Rogers was gonna die in the first ep- in the first half because because uh, th- it shows an explosion in the trailer, but I was like, oh, no, he's alive. He's just gonna be Peggy Carter's role at this point, <laughs> which is hilarious. See, the roles reverse in this, and I love that. I love the role reversal, but the uh. The stuff about their character development stays the same, though. Because it is, like... Because even though, like, uh, Steve is not the super soldier, Peggy still has a uh, problem fitting in. Because, you know, even though Steve wants his voice heard because he thinks he could do well in the war effort, Peggy lives a more different version since it's the 40s because she's a woman. They don't think a woman can be strong, can be powerful, and actually help in the war effort. And Peggy's trying to prove them wrong with her super soldier strength and her enthusiasm and determination what she does in this episode. And I really like that they, they changed it a lot because it's still the same struggles these two characters go by even even i'm not going to spoil how it ends but it does technically end the same in a way i'm not going to say it's going to it ends like the same way as the movie but it it still say, ends in the same um mood like one of them go one of them is out of time And then they find out everyone they love is dead and they're in the future now. They're no longer in the 40s and they are and the and then this particular character is now sad that they the person they love is gone or well is probably old and has dementia now, which is really nice to see things differently, how things differently play out but still have the same mannerisms, still has the same beats in a way with uh, with Captain America, the, the first Avenger. And I love that it's still the same beats, but it's played by a different person's perspective, and I love that. And I love how it's played differently because it does make sense. It does make perfect sense why they wouldn't let Peggy Carter be the one to like be on the stage and act like a superhero on the stage and punching Hitler 40 or 50 times on stage in like some like silly looking like war effort like propaganda stage kind of thing because she's a woman and I do love that I love that interesting thing about the show oh and I love that it it changes things, but not a lot, but it changes the way how they're played out, which I liked. Episode 2 has that same thing. What if T'Challa was Star-Lord? And what I love about it is T'Challa leaves a bigger impact than what Peter Quill did. T'Challa is well known to everyone. Unlike the first movie where, you know, Peter Quill is not recognize he says hey you know me by star lord but they don't because he's a nobody and he's basically just a joke to everyone in the galaxy and and what i love is dejoman hosoda who plays like this kree warrior or whatever he was in um captain marvel and guardians of the galaxy he is like fanboying over T'Challa like he is like oh my god it's Star-Lord oh oh what do we do should we bow oh you are a legend man like it's different and I love it's different because T'Challa is more of like the voice of reason he is a more negotiable man that knows more things about peace and he always tries to talk things out with peace with negotiation with his words of wisdom And I love that stays true in character that he is because he is a prince that was uh, groomed to be a king in the future 
in Wakanda. But then he left that because he was tired of only seeing Wakanda and he wanted to explore the world and bring peace around the world. But he didn't because his father saw one-sided thinking that the whole world on Earth is all about war, which it is, but his father fought differently and he thought differently and he gets taken by the Ravengers, but... You know, they thought he was Peter Quill, but he wasn't, which is silly because he's black and Peter Quill's white. Eight. (laughs) White. And it's very hilarious where Peter Quill is at in his life. (laughs) It really is hilarious what happens to him. But I'm not going to say that until the spoiler section. But T'Challa is more peaceful. He... He talks. He talks more with his like, uh, with his words more than action, and I love that about his character. He's more smart, and mo- he's more smart. He's more smart, and he's a, uh, he's uh, well guided. Basically, he is. He's not like Star Lord, who has a lot of pent up aggression and a lot of like, you know childish uh mannerisms and due to what happened to him after being taken as a child from earth in the 80s he's more like because you know he was more dressed to be chichala is more dressed to be proper like a proper young gentleman like a royal prince to be this uh uh to be more gentleman like Rather than, you know, Star-Lord back then with Peter Quill, who was more childish, silly, and just uh, thinks too headstrong, and he's such a total jackass all the time. But, like, but T'Challa thinks things better, and he does a lot of good things in the galaxy that help benefit people. Hell, he made... uh, he made a ah oh, frick forgot Michael Rooker's character Yondu. He made Yondu more like a good guy again. He's not like greed or money. He show he still he was shown the error of his ways through T'Challa some most of the time, and he tries to put that benefit of saying like he wanted the Ravengers to be like Robin Hoods, basically, and help like steal from um rich people to give to the a poor basically in a way and he does help shape the galaxy a lot in this episode and it was amazing Chadwick Boseman does a as always he does a great performance playing his role as T'Challa again which is very sad that this was his uh, final role as an actor before he sadly passed away uh, last year which was pretty sad but it's amazing that we actually did get to see him, well, hear him play his character as T'Challa one last time before he went. And you can tell he was, he wanted to bring, like, justice to his character the best way he could when he was doing that role. Because apparently he probably did this when he was not doing too well, he was feeling a bit under the weather of because of his cancer and everything and but you can tell that he did gave a strong performance in this movie and that was great seeing him giving back his performance as T'Challa even though how sick of it he was because people only know him for that role I knew him as James Brown in Get On Up (laughs) I know him for that I know him for uh I forgot the name of the baseball player that was black but i remember him for that too because that was the first movie i seen him in it was the movie was called 42 and he was really good in that and he and i love how he does it even i'm more shocked that the actors who were um that came back to reprise their roles started in this show i was surprised i mean yeah the people who retired the characters or they were busy doing other things, never came back. I mean, you're not going to get Dave Batista back as Drax because 
you know, he wants to be taken seriously as an actor and not just comic relief. So, of course, he never took it. Chris Evans, he's done with Steve Rogers. But the guy who plays Steve Rogers in this show, he does a damn good Chris Evans impersonation. Like, it is, like, spot on. I mean, you can hear cracks and holes in a little bit of places, but he does a great job, like, a majority of the time playing Chris sounding like Chris Evans it's amazing I mean it's kind of better than the guy who sounds like Tony Stark or Robert Downey Jr <laughs> I mean I've heard better voice actors who did, does a great Robert Downey Jr impersonation in like what was it the Avengers Assemble cartoon there was a guy that actually did pretty good as play as sounding like Robert Downey Jr but the guy I heard in the trailer, I was like, no, that's an obvious other guy playing him. That's obviously not him. But the guy who plays Chris Evans, amazing. I always am happy to see more Agent Carter because she was my favorite character in Captain America, the first Avenger. She is great. I love Haley Atwell. I love her in this role as uh, Peggy Carter. Hell, I loved the show Agent Carter before it sadly got canceled after two seasons. I really loved that show when I was uh, still in high school. And it was really sad that show got canceled. I really wish there was more of it. But seeing more Agent Carter is a plus for me. Because... <laughs> Haley Atwell gives it 100% with her role, and she does a great job. Also, damn, she looks muscular as fuck, and I'm really starting to get the wave of the vapors on me. <laughs> but she not, she's not as hot as another character that I didn't expect to be a total baddie, and I don't use that word often, but <laughs> I will tell you in spoilers... There is. Or hell, I can... No, I will, I'll tell you in spoilers. I'll tell you in spoilers. But um, it was so fun to see these characters come together, actually reprising their roles. I was, I was also shocked that Kurt Russell came back as Ego, the living planet. I was like, wow. Jeffrey Wright as the Watcher was perfect casting. Jeffrey Wright has those, like... You those strong, unique voices like mm, I am the Watcher, and such. He's really a great choice playing the Watcher, and him talking about he cannot interfere. He can only watch the different timelines, the different stories of the the vast multiverse, and he does a well a great job playing the Watcher. It is a great like casting choice because I was like thinking that's how the Watcher would sound like. In like if he was put on a show. I mean, as much as I'm not a big Marvel fan, I know a few things about characters like The Watcher and other things. And given to hopefully the fans who are really big, huge fans of the Marvel comics, I think this will please them a lot. And it certainly did surprise me. I did love a lot of things in this show that they did and i really do love it <laughs> all right so let's get into spoilers if you haven't seen the show you should stop right here um the fan service i didn't like was steve since he doesn't have the super soldier serum um howard stark basically makes the mark one iron man suit but they call it the Hydra Buster in this. And I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> I was like rolling my eyes thinking, are you serious? <laughs> it's the 40s. How do you have this technology? <laughs> Gee, Stanley Tucci comes back as that German doctor that makes the super soldier serum. But he has one line in the in the entire episode before getting blown to bits so it's... <laughs> i don't know if there was any point to bring him back <laughs> back steve rogers gets shot and it, it it's and it prevents him from ever 
uh, going inside the, the, um, it prevents him from going inside the, uh, the, the, the containment unit that will help him become a super soldier, which is kind of odd because it was like, I mean, he shot. Don't you think the super soldier serum could help him heal that wound and it'd be nothing to him? Like, it's kind of weird. Like, they just think about that split second and that's it. And, um, but... <laughs> there. But then again, we wouldn't get swole Peggy, Peggy Carter looking like she just did five deadlifts at the gym. And I'm like, oh my god, that's a tall woman. <laughs> she looked like an Amazon warrior and it was awesome. I am I am totally going down bad for Agent Carter. Not as down bad for someone else, but we'll get there <laughs> until we're done with episode one. And I did love that Captain Carter is very like she. It's like different. Like oh man, how she experienced being, uh, well her version of Captain America. Let's call her Captain Britain. I mean I know that's a Marvel character already, Captain Britain, but that's basically what she is, Captain Britain. <laughs> and when she becomes that, she, it it shows when she starts to use her powers as a super soldier for the first time. And it's so amazing how she's so happy, like, oh, this is new. This is so much fun. And she loves it. And I even love the chemistry they still have, she still has with Steve and how much, like, they are together. And then Steve's, like, in the uh, the uh, Hydra uh, stomper uh, suit. And then... Steve calls it his dancing shoes. Like, I finally got my dancing shoes. And Carter's like, well, let's dance. And they both destroy and annihilate the Hydra army <laughs> in mere seconds. And Bucky and all the other team members are, like, shocked about this. <laughs> this. And I loved it. There's also a thing in this show. Bucky does not become the Winter Soldier. He survives the uh, train uh, fall that he was supposed to be because Steve actually takes his place in the train because the train was uh, decoy and it was set with explosives to but Steve was actually he still was alive actually he didn't get killed I was assuming the fact that he would be the winter soldier <laughs> I mean wouldn't that be interesting like like he goes and not Bucky, and then Steve becomes the Winter Soldier himself. I was like thinking, oh man, would that be something? <laughs> that would have been something, don't you think? I was like, holy shit. There was also one scene I love where Steve and uh, Peggy are like, they're flying in the air with the Hydra Stomper suit, and then they see like all the ger the German like Nazi like Hydra. Uh, biplanes and everything and K K Peggy just leaps towards like into like the window of the freaking like uh, plane and just attacks them and destroys the planes with the shield it was such a cool scene I loved it oh it was so fun I I, I it was so fun and there's a lot of differences of what happens in there but it does as I said it does play beat by beat the same way but in a the same uh story but played out in a different way instead of the tesseract killing the red skull and uh take killing the red skull and uh with the tesseract and destroying him and then him becoming like the uh protector or like the guy the guide to the uh other infinity stone that the soul stone and tells everyone a soul for a soul in order to get it um they uh, uh instead he uses the tesseract as a portal to get this octopus uh hydra like cthulhu like monster from the portal because he talks to like one of the nazi officers that were like i will bring our true victor from the sky above to come and kill our enemy. And then 
the thing just crushes Red Skull into bits and just snaps him dead with its tentacles. Like, <laughs> and I was like, wow. I think he got off easy with the Tesseract in, in the movie. <laughs> but Peggy has to be the one to, like, stop the evil creature from coming out of the portal. And the only way she could do that was use her shield and her strength to push the monster out and, and put it back into where it came from and hopefully get back to Steve and everyone. But sadly, the portal closed before she can get out. And then she then later reappears, uh, assumingly killed the monster, and she sees Nick Fury and Hawkeye right there and saying like, sorry, Agent Carter, but the war is over. And she's sad because, you know, just like the same line with Steve saying like he had a date, she's crying like, cry, I'm not sad, I'm happy, the war is over. And she's like depressed like so depressed because she knows everyone she knows is probably dead or old or haven't survived and it's pretty sad to see that play out in the last episode because it does tug on the heartstrings because you know these characters as much as this shows like half the episodes are half an hour long they still give the characters great like development because you still know who they are you've seen the movies but they still play it out the same way to develop their character since this is a different timeline this is a different universe entirely so they have to change a few things but you already know how things will play out and it's really nice to see it be take on differently and i love that because it shows there are different things that would happen but you know bucky doesn't become the winter soldier not even steve he doesn't become the winter soldier but still though even though with steve not being the captain america they everyone wanted it still has that sadness of knowing that yeah uh the um that everyone's dead like they're not gonna come back they're not gonna miraculously become alive and still the same age they were before they're not there's nothing no repercussions no nothing it seems like everything played out differently but sadly it just makes it more depressing because it's basically peggy has no one to go back to unless she discovers time travel then <laughs> she could uh probably go back and be with steve again which is a possibility episode two is my favorite out of the episodes so far uh, and it's mainly because of chadwick bosman and all the other actors who returned from guardians of the galaxy like a huge majority of them and it's crazy. Benicio Del Toro is back as the, as the Collector. Michael Rooker is back as Yondu. Josh Brolin is back as Thanos. But Thanos is more reformed in a way. Since the, as I say, since T'Challa is more of a man of words of wisdom and tries to see things in a different positive light, he somehow convinced Thanos there are better ways to help his world thrive and doesn't need to sacrifice everyone with genocide like he showed his he showed Thanos better ways to help people and it is really shocking to see Thanos like he just took a different route and said you know what T'Challa you are right my man I shouldn't do that I should do this he gave him better options on how to like help the universe by not doing genocide but Thanos still believes genocide can work <laughs> but he says it's not genocide <laughs> Thanos is like you have convinced me T'Challa but snapping half of the universe is still not a bad plan <laughs> He's st at least Thanos stuck to his guns but at least he knows that there are better ways that help the universe thrive Nebula is not fully a robot, half robot, 
anymore because apparently T'Challa came at the right time before she became fully human. And remember I said there's one character I call a total baddie? It's Nebula. <laughs> huh? She has blonde hair. She's not fully a robot. And she is just... Gosh, she's beautiful. She is gorgeous. Like, man, total bombshell of a character she is. And... Karen Gillian back as uh, freaking Nebula, always great as always. I'm like, good God, I love this character. <laughs> there, I liked Nebula before, but my God, I think they made her even better in this What If episode. And she was just a total baddie. I mean, my God, I could not take my eyes off of her. I was I was going down bad that hard for her. <laughs> uh, it's silly, but you know, I just loved it. T'Challa did make the galaxy a better place. Hell, even having Drax's family be alive still, like his wife and daughter are still alive, and he sees T'Challa and he's like, I should take a picture of the man who helped my family. And he does. And it's such a sweet scene. And it makes you think, wow, the galaxy's better off without Peter Quill. And it's so funny about that because it's like, wow, we didn't need Peter at all. T'Challa did a better job than what Peter did because Peter only thought for himself at times. But... T'Challa thinks about the people, and that's pretty cool. I love that. He did a... T'Challa is a true Chad helping the universe, even turning the Mad Titan a new leaf. Like, that's crazy. He stopped, like, Infinity War. But then again, the problems still arise because... <laughs> I said the funny thing about this movie is Peter Quill stayed on Earth... So he works at a Dairy Queen as a janitor. <laughs> and yes, it is the same Dairy Queen in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And his father, uh, uh, Ego, comes in and talks to him. And that's how you know it's bad because... <laughs> because it shows that, like... If Peter didn't get kidnapped by the Ravengers, he's easily probably to be manipulated. But then again, he'll probably get pissed off at the whole you killed my mother line. But he can't do shit about it because he never met Gamora. He never met Yondu. He never met Rocket. Never met Groot. So <laughs> that means he is screwed and the whole universe is screwed since Ego's plan probably will get uh come to fruition which makes begs the question does that make ego the living planet the big bad and not thanos because that does beg that question does that make him the big bad now oh well, i mean it showed that the collector could have been the big bad because he took thanos's role as the most deadliest person in the whole entire galaxy because now the Collector has like all the evil henchmen that Thanos used to have in Infinity War, but now he doesn't because, you know, he turned that new leaf, basically. And the Collector is now more powerful. And apparently the Collector killed Hela. You know, Thor's sister and Thor Ragnarok. I'm like, how? Because he took her crown and yet somehow he killed her. Yeah, and he somehow took Captain America's uh, shield, the vibranium shield as well. So the Collector did something behind our backs before, like, um, they, before, that he did off screen that he probably killed Captain America and probably killed Hela also. Oh, which begs the question, how did he come across Hela? Was Odin already dead or something? Who knows? It's like crazy. Like in now, like the episode makes you ask more questions, wondering what was the collector doing all these like all this time while T'Challa was trying to help the galaxy. Like that's insane. Like it makes you big questions. But then again, the collector gets killed off at the end. 
which is cool. He gets killed off by everyone who he collected. And of course, we get to see Howard the Duck again <laughs> in this. Played again by Seth Green, who played the character in Volume 2. And I think in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, it was James or Sean Gunn that voiced uh, Howard the Duck in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. But, you know, Seth Green took over in the second film and then became Howard the Duck ever since. <laughs> and he's still annoying as ever. <laughs> nah, he's pretty chill. <laughs> A drunk, but pretty chill. I do love that T'Challa was willing to go back to his family at the end of the episode where he shows uh, his uh, father and his mother and his sister Suri uh, his other family that he met along the way and shows that he's been taken care of, he's fine, he's good because it shows that T'Challa believed that Wakanda destroyed itself in a war but that was a lie made by Yondu so Yondu hasn't completely changed. <laughs> It's so amazing seeing this show and actually portraying these characters and showing them like, what if this happened? And I love that. It does a great job. Only, you know, T'Challa teaches them different ways than Peter Quill did. Peter Quill teached through music while, you know, T'Challa teach through his wisdom, through his in from his intelligence in other ways from what he learned in Wakanda through peace and that was pretty cool oh you see the difference in the contrast of things where it's like one person could change things and turn the tide in different scenarios quill couldn't leave an impact to anyone until like the end of the first movie and the end of the second movie as well oh but t'challa he did it in a in a second, like he did a lot of good with what knowledge he had that he learned in Wakanda. And that was pretty interesting to see. And I love that. Yeah. So far, the show is really, really good so far. I really hope that we get more amazing episodes as this. And it's really sad that, you know, this is Chadwick Bosman's last performance as you know, Black Panther. Well, he's not the Black Panther. He is Star-Lord. But it was a nice uh, send-off to go on in uh, in his career. And I, I respect him. Rest in power, man. You meant a lot to us. Yes, but so that was my What If review. What did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Did you have fun with this show more than I do? I mean, I did. I mean, more so with Loki. I mean, Loki had those what-if things, but not that much. It just talked about the multiverse of different Lokis. Like, oh, there's a female Loki. That's it. <laughs> and, I mean, Loki did other things that I liked. Talking about different universes, different timelines, how you can never affect an apocalyptic, uh, like an, uh, an apocalypse, or like a or like a, uh, oh, uh, or like a uh, disaster, because there's nothing you could do to destroy that time, that point in history, because everything is just gonna get destroyed anyway. And I really did love that concept. Like, oh yeah, you can't change the past uh, during a apocalyptic or disastrous event because even if you did destroy things or tampered a few things in that timeline, you can't affect anything because everything's going to be destroyed anyway. And I did like that concept. It was, uh, at times... Especially the th third episode, I believe, where it just felt like total padding and total, like, filler that could have been solved in, like, a few lines and that's it. But 
they wanted to make it six episodes, but <laughs> that was not good. <laughs> and, but, you know, I liked it more than the last two shows because at least its climax wasn't that disappointing than the rest. Yes, I mean, Falcon the Winter Soldier, I was like okay with, but kind of rolled my eyes at places. WandaVision, I was really disappointed because I really wish there was more to it because it left you with more questions and it left you kind of empty inside and also gave you a horrible joke, even though the potential of what they brought in with this one character, you already know who it is, it's Quicksilver. And then it turns out it wasn't Quicksilver from a different timeline. It was just some dude who was an actor. I hated that. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, cool. I love you for it. <laughs> Alright, I don't know what would be the thumbnail of this video. Probably me saying like, damn, Nebula's a baddie. <laughs> 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 Probably. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Man, I caught you lacking. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. I'm going to release this episode to this video today because I don't have a video plan today and I'll have my biggest project episode for tomorrow on Friday so look forward to that anyway see you guys in the next one ciao darlings ow 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 ow